Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I want to show you a little free plugin that I developed for you all. It is a stereo widening plugin. And before I'm going to show you the plugin, I will show you a reasonable situation in which you might want to use it. So here is Strum Session playing the guitar. <laughs> Now, Strum Session comes with its own little reverb, but like in most synthesizer plugins that only have a reverb where you can dial in the dry white mix and nothing else, it is not the best reverb of all time. I guess it tries to be somewhat like a rehearsal room or something, but sometimes it's just a little bit too noisy for me. So typically what you would do then is you would make a reverb send like this, maybe. So here we have a transient shaper reducing the transients of the guitar so that the reverb reacts more to the body instead of the plucky sounds. So far so good. And then my technique in my plugin all has, which can sound like this. So as you can probably hear, it is a very subtle shift in the stereo width. It kind of feels like you are moving something around, like it's not on the same spot anymore. And that's why I called these parameters distance cutoff and feedback left and right. What this actually is, it's actually much simpler. It is in fact just two instances of dispersor, one for each channel. So distance is the amount of all pass filters and the cutoff frequencies are like well, the cutoff frequencies, if I dial in a little bit of distance and turn up the feedback, then you can see feedback also does the same thing as it does in any all pass filter. So yeah, this thing is basically just moving around two all pass filters. I want to apply it to the dry signal now instead of the reverb set and show you something. <laughs> So I, I feel like on the dry signal, usually it has much more of an effect. However, you have to be really careful with that because the mono compatibility can suffer from it and you can check that with a mono button. Actually not that terrible right now, but let's try to find a setting where it really doesn't work. So yeah, it really sometimes takes away some of the juicy character that you really like about the sound. So that's why there is a mono compatibility button. And that's also why I would rather recommend it being used on reverb sense. Because when the signal is already very diffuse, then it can't really break anything. Almost the same, you know. But if you are still a little bit unsure if you should actually use this in this way. Then there is also a mid side mode in which one instance of disperser is used for mid and the other one for side. And this mode just has a way less devastating effect on the mono compatibility if you care about that, but also less potential to create a really crazy width. So this is like the, the more sane approach to use this plugin. I'm currently not wearing headphones, as you can probably tell, but when I came up with this technique, I was wearing headphones and I feel like this plugin and plugins like this are most effective for music that is composed to be consumed via headphones. Um, I'm not saying you should like stay away from it if your music is supposed to be played on speakers, but if you want to add details in your music that are supposed to be enjoyed by people who want to be really close to the sound with the headphones, then you can do that with all has and you should really play around with this plugin while wearing headphones if you have some sparkly background elements that you want to place just where they need to be, then this plugin is for you. And yeah, for reverb sense. 
Just like all of my plugins, you can get this from GitHub and you can get this from KVR and it's available for Windows, but if anyone compiles it for Mac or Linux and gives me the compiled file, then it will also be available for those systems. Yeah, and that's all I have to say for now, I guess.